Breathing in, I know I am alive. Breathing out, I smile to life in me and around me. I'm alive, smiling to life. Breathing in, I know that Mother Earth is around me and inside of me. Breathing out, I feel grateful to Mother Earth around me and inside of me. Mother Earth, smile in gratitude to Mother Earth. Good morning, dear Sangha. Today is uh, Sunday, the 14th of October in the year 2012. And we are in the full moon meditation hall of the new hamlet, Plum Ridge. This is our uh, second day, uh, second week of the autumn retreat. Last week we have learned uh, many things. Some of us have left, but uh, many of us still continue with the fall retreat. We have learned uh, the practice of the eight, the first eight exercise of mindful breathing. The first four are to help us to come back to our body to help release the tension in our body, to 
to reconnect with our body, to make our body lighter and more comfortable. The next four exercises help us to handle our painful feeling, our painful emotions. Also, to help us to create feelings of joy, feelings of happiness, uh, wherever we are, and and uh, uh, whenever we want. So those those of you who just come uh, on Friday, uh, are encouraged to listen again to the last uh, the two Dhamma talks uh, given by Thay uh, during the last uh, week. It's, it's very basic for uh, for the practice. Uh, so that Thay doesn't have to repeat again what Thay has said in the first and the second Dhamma talk. We know that uh, Mother Earth is not just the environment. Usually we think that uh, our environment is uh, Mother Earth. And we tend to think of Mother Earth as uh, matter and not mind. That is a wrong perception. Mother Earth is not uh, matter. She is the mother of all the Buddhas. She is the mother of all Bodhisattvas and saints. Buddha, Jesus Christ, all are children of Mother Earth, and we also are children of Mother Earth. Mother Earth, according to the view of uh, a Buddhist, is a great bodhisattva, a great enlightened being, full of compassion, patience, understanding, and love. Mother Earth is not matter. Mother Earth is also spirit. And how, how can matter give birth to Buddhas, saints, and bodhisattvas? A Bodhisattva means a living being. Sattva means a living being. And we have to learn to train ourselves to see Mother Earth as uh, a living being. And that living being is a great living being. It's a Mahasattva, not just a Sattva, but it's Mahasattva. Đại hữu tình Bồ Tát Maha Tát Means Bodhisattva Maha Sattva Bodhisattva Is a living being that is already enlightened, yak hutin. So Mother Earth is a great, is a enlightened being, and she is a great being. A Bodhisattva, Mahasattva. We have to train ourselves to see Mother Earth like that. Because we know that uh, Buddha, Jesus, and other great Bodhisattvas have been born uh, 
from Mother Earth. And we also are children of Mother Earth. And Mother Earth is not only outside of us, around us, Mother Earth is in us, so we carry Mother Earth within ourselves. And if uh, the lifespan of Mother Earth cannot be determined by years, and then our lifespan is also infinite, we should not be away, afraid of dying. Because our uh, lifespan is the lifespan of Mother Earth. So, Mother Earth help us to manifest in this form. And after some time, we go back to Mother Earth and she will help us manifest again in other forms. There's no reason why to be afraid of dying. Because we are Mother Earth. We carry Mother Earth in us. If the Mother has that kind of uh, infinite uh, lifespan and we do, have that lifespan also. We have to learn like that. <coughs> In our mind, we have uh, a tendency to discriminate, or dis- discriminate against, we discriminate between mind and matter. And that is why we ask the question whether mind is a product of matter, and so our matter is a product of mind. Uh, materialism say that our mind is a product of matter, and idealism say that uh, uh, what you see as matter there's only your mind. So they continue to quarrel and dispute with each other just because they use the mind of discrimination in order to look at things. But in the tradition of Buddhism, mind and matter are not two separate entities. Sometimes they manifest as mind. Sometimes it manifests as matter. It's like in uh, subatomic uh, physics, the element particle sometimes express itself as uh, a particle, sometimes as a wave. So, so to say that it is a particle is wrong. To say that it is a wave is equally wrong. It is both. And this sheet of paper which has the left and the right. And we know that we cannot take the left out of the right and the right out of the left. You cannot come and take the right and go to Bogdo and the left to go to Toulouse. No. They are always together. You cannot take them out of each other. And that is the teaching of interbeing in Buddhism. Interbeing means you cannot be by yourself alone. You have to interbe with us. The left has to interbe with the right. The left is not the enemy of the right. The left has to lean on the right in order to manifest herself. And the right has to lean, to lean on the left in order to manifest herself. So this is the mind of non-discrimination. But if we continue with our mind of discrimination, we distort everything. And we, and we oppose matter to mind, left and right, and so on. And last week we also learned that uh, suffering and happiness, they are not enemies. They inter- are 
suffering is made of happiness, and happiness is made of suffering. If there is no suffering, there is no happiness. And if there is no happiness, there is no suffering. It's like the lotus flower and mud. If there is no mud, you cannot grow lotus. And the lotus stay there for some time and become the mud again. So looking into the lotus, you see the mud. And looking into the mud, you see future lotus. So suffering is like that. Someone who, have, uh, who has the capacity to go back to himself and listen to his own suffering and look deeply into his suffering, he will be able to understand that suffering inside of him that carries with it the suffering of his father, his mother, his ancestors. And getting in touch with suffering inside helps you to understand your own suffering. And understanding suffering gives rise to compassion. And when compassion arises, you suffer less right away. Because you see the path of, uh, of uh, transformation and healing. If you have understood the nature, the roots of your suffering, and then the path of uh, the path leading to the cessation of the suffering will appear in front of you. And having seen the path, you are no longer afraid. You know how to make good use of suffering in order to make happiness. It is like uh, the brothers in Plum Village, they know how to make good use of the mud in order to produce beautiful lotus flowers. There are one or two lotus flowers left in the upper hamlet and the lower hamlet. So, so one of the things we learned uh, last week is that uh, we need suffering. Suffering can be, uh, can be useful and we can speak about the goodness of suffering. Because uh, going back and listen and understanding and understand our suffering, we give rise to the birth uh, of, uh, of, uh, of uh, compassion and love. And when compassion, love is born, we suffer less right away. Suppose you look at someone, even that someone has made you suffer a lot during the past many years. You don't want to, to look at him or her. Because, because every time you look at him or her, you suffer. Because you believe that uh, that person has made you suffer so much. But now with the practice, it becomes different. Because you have already understood your own suffering. That is why you are capable of recognizing the suffering in him, in her. And you understand why such a person suffers so much. And that person suffers so much and does not know how to handle the suffering. That is why his suffering is spilling all over around. And you are a victim. Maybe he did not want to make you suffer just because he did not know how he does not know how to handle the suffering that is why he continues to suffer and because he suffer you have to suffer you are the second victim and he is the first victim of his suffering so having understood your own suffering you have compassion you have uh, insight and you suffer less and that allows you to look at the other person and when you can see the suffering in her, in him, and you understand why that person suffers like that, you are no longer ang- angry at him anymore. And this is, uh, 
the truth. When you look at someone, and if you can see the suffering in that someone, that he is not capable of handling the suffering, you don't blame, blame him anymore. You are not angry at him anymore. Instead, you want to do something and to say something in order for him to suffer less. It means that you have compassion in your heart. And compassion in your heart does not make you suffer anymore. So the practice is how to give birth to compassion. Once you have compassion and understanding, you look at the other person, you see the suffering in him, in her, you are not you are no longer angry at him or her, and you want to say something or to do something to help that person suffer less. So the 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 practice is very um, effective. You may succeed in just a few days. First of all, you go home to yourself and try your best to get in touch with the suffering inside and listen to the suffering in, inside of you. Many of us do not want to do that because we believe that it is uh, unpleasant. If you don't know the practice, going, with to, going back to yourself and getting in touch with the suffering, you might be overwhelmed by the suffering inside. That is why you are always trying to run away from yourself, to get busy, to cover up the suffering inside by consuming. You watch television, you read newspaper, you listen to music, you have conversation, you do everything so that you can be busy enough and not have uh, to encounter the suffering inside. That is uh, the practice of most of us in the world. And that is what the Buddha advised us not to do. Because suffering in us demands to be understood. And we always try to avoid it, to cover it, cover it up. Because we are afraid to be in touch with the suffering inside. We pretend that it is not there. But it is really there, a big block inside. So the practice of uh, Buddhist meditation is to generate the energy of mindfulness so that you'll be strong enough to come home to yourself without fear. And mindfulness can be generated by the practice of sitting, of walking, of breathing. Breathing mindfully, walking mindfully, sitting mindfully, you generate the energy of mindfulness. Mindfulness is the energy that allows you to bring your mind home to your body, to know what is going on, to recognize what is there. Mindfulness tells you, there is suffering in myself. I have to take care of my suffering. Mindfulness helps recognize suffering inside. Mindfulness helps us to embrace our suffering with tenderness, like a mother holding her child that suffers. And if we know how to embrace our suffering, uh, with tenderness, using the energy of mindfulness to do so, we will suffer less after a few minutes of practice. Like the baby uh, being whole tenderly by the mother, feel better, suffer less. So the daily practice of mindful breathing, mindful walking, is very important because it helps uh, generate energy of mindfulness. And it is with that energy that you can go home without fear and listen and embrace your suffering inside. Understand your own suffering, you understand the suffering of your father. 
because because your father, your father, may have uh, had a lot of suffering, and because he may not be able to handle and transform the suffering, that is why he has transmitted the whole mass of suffering to you, and that is the what you inherit from him. So when you understand your own suffering, you understand the suffering of your father. And you don't get angry at him anymore. When you understand your own suffering, you understand easily the suffering of your mother. And you do not blame her anymore. Because your suffering inter-is with the suffering of father, mother, and society. So having understood our own suffering, we begin to understand the suffering of mother, father, ancestors, and our partner. We may have uh, difficulties in relationship with our, with our son, our daughter, our father, our mother. And if uh, you do not uh, know how to practice listening to our own suffering, and then there is no chance to improve the quality of uh, the relationship. If you have understood your suffering, it's much easier to improve the relationship with the other person. Because understanding your suffering, you can easily recognize the suffering in the other person. The other person may be your father, your mother, your son, your daughter, or your partner. And once you have seen the suffering in him or in her, seeing that he is, she is the victim of that suffering, you don't suffer anymore. Instead, you want to help him. You become a bodhisattva. You're enlightened. A bodhisattva, to become a bodhisattva, bodhisattva is possible. Bodhisattva is an enlightened being. And if you understand your own suffering, you have an enlightenment. Enlightenment is always enlightenment about something. If you begin to un- understand the nature and the root of your suffering, that is already a kind of enlightenment. And that kind of enlightenment helps you to suffer less right away. And it brings you compassion. And you are somehow a bodhisattva for yourself. You don't blame yourself. You don't hate yourself anymore. There are those of us who blame ourselves, who hate ourselves, because we have not understood ourselves. We have not understood the suffering in ourselves. But once we have understood ourselves, have understood the suffering in ourselves, we suffer less right away. We accept ourselves as we are. And then, Improving our relationship with the other person becomes very easy, much easier. Peace, enlightenment always begin within ourselves. And when you fight, you, f- you find, you feel lighter, freer, from anger, from uh, conflict within yourself. You are capable of looking and seeing and recognizing the suffering in the other person. And when you look like that, you don't suffer anymore. Instead, you are capable to look with the element of compassion in your eyes. When you look with compassion in your eyes, you don't suffer. 
looking at living beings with uh, compassion. That is a sentence quoted from the Lotus Sutra. Từ nhãn thì chúng sanh. When you look with compassion, you don't suffer. When you look with anger, you suffer. <laughs> and it is not difficult to look with compassion. If you can see the suffering inside of him or her, you, you already have compassion in you. Because understanding always brings about compassion. And then you can, you can use the kind of language that can help him. Before that, it's difficult for you to, to talk to him or to her uh, kindly. Because you are so angry at him, at her. It's impossible for you to speak uh, kindly with him or her. There are children who who are so angry at their father or mother. They cannot talk nicely with them. But when you have seen the suffering in your father, in your mother, suffering arises, uh, understanding arises at the same time with uh, compassion. And suddenly you find yourself capable of helping him. You can say, Father, Daddy, I know you have suffered quite a lot. I was not able to help you. Instead, I have reacted in such a way that makes you suffer more. I'm so sorry. You can say like that, naturally, and do not have to make any effort. This is uh, the practice of the fourth uh, mindfulness training. Loving peace, loving speech, and deep listening. A bodhisattva is someone who can talk, he can speak with a kind of language called uh, gentle loving speech. A Bodhisattva is someone who can listen with compassion. And if you train for three days, you might become a Bodhisattva. And you might talk to him or to her with that kind of language. And you might listen to him, to her with that kind of compassion. You don't have to practice ten years in order to do that. A few days may be enough. Father, Daddy, I know you have suffered so much in the past many years. I was not able to help you to suffer less. Instead, I have reacted angrily in such a way that uh, made the situation worse. Daddy, it's not my intention to make you suffer. That's only because I did not see the suffering in you. I did not understand the suffering in you. So please, Daddy, tell me what is in your heart. Tell me what is the difficulties, the despair, the conflict in your heart. Please help me so that I will understand. If I understand, I will not react like, like the way I have in the past. Please help me. If you don't help me, who will help? That is the kind of loving speech, kind speech that you can you can do, you can use. If you if you learn to look in such a way that you can see the suffering in that person and recognize uh, the roots of the suffering in him or in her. It's like a doctor. If the doctor does not see the sickness, the nature of the sickness, 
He cannot help. She cannot help the patient. It's like a psychotherapist. If she does not understand truly the suffering, the cause of, of suffering of his, uh, her patient, she cannot help. That is, that is why understanding suffering is a crucial practice in Buddhist tradition. In fact, the first noble truth is uh, suffering, and the second noble truth is the cause, the nature, the root of suffering. And then if you are able to say like that, the other person will open his heart and tell you what is in his heart. And now you have a an opportunity to practice deep listening, to practice uh, compassionate listening. Compassionate listening is a wonderful practice. If you can listen for one hour with compassion, you help the other person suffer much less in one hour. And compassionate listening is a kind of listening that uh, that uh, has compassion as uh, the essence. Because uh, if uh, you do not practice mindfulness of compassion, you cannot listen very long. You may have a good intention to listen to him, to her, in order to help him or her suffer less. Your intention may be very good. But if you don't do not know the practice of mindfulness, of compassion, and then uh, you may lose uh, your capacity of listening. Because what the other person say may be full of wrong perceptions, may be full of uh, bitterness, accusation, blames. And that may touch off irritation and anger in you, and you lose your capacity of listen, listening to him or to her. That is why you have to train yourself first before you begin the practice with him or her. You have to, to got the time to look and to see the suffering in him, in her. And uh, You must be ready before you practice. And during the time, the practice, you should maintain the mindfulness of compassion alive. Mindfulness of compassion means uh, you are aware, you remember that uh, you listen to him or to her with only one purpose that is to help him or her empty their heart and suffer less. I am listening to him with only one purpose, to help him to suffer less. Therefore, even if he says wrong things, if he is bitter, if he blames, I still continue to listen. He may say wrong things, but I am not going to interrupt him. Because if I interrupt him and correct him, and then I will transform the session into a debate, and that it, that it will ruin everything. So breathe in and out mindfully during the whole session of listening and remember just one thing. Listening to that person, I only have a purpose. Give him a chance to suffer less. Just remember one thing throughout the session. And you can tell yourself that uh, his misunderstanding, his judgment, based on prejudices and misunderstanding. In a few days, I will have a chance to give him, to offer him some 
information so that he can correct his perception, but not now. Now is only to listen. <coughs> and if you can keep that alive in your heart, in your mind, I listen only with one purpose, not to correct him, but to allow him to speak out and suffer less. Just that. It's called mindfulness of compassion. And if you can keep your mindfulness of compassion during one hour, when you, you listen to him or to her, you are a bodhisattva. Because the energy of compassion is in your heart. You are inhabited by the energy of compassion. You are safe. And if compassion is there, what the other person say, even with a lot of wrong perception, even with bitterness, anger, blames, accusation, you are safe because you are protected by compassion. The best protection is the protection with compassion. So you can sit there and listen for one hour or more. Of course, you have the right to tell him or her the truth, but not now, later on. So in the retreats that we offer a little bit everywhere in Europe, North America, Asia, Australia, on the fifth day of the retreat, we, we always propose uh, returns to put into the practice the fourth uh, mindfulness training, deep listening and loving speech in order to help restore communication and bring about reconciliation with the person you are having dif- difficulty with. I said, we said, because uh, there are many Dhamma teachers uh, 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 that are offering uh, mindfulness retreats a little bit everywhere. And many of uh, the Dhamma teachers in Plum Village are, have just uh, offered uh, um, retreats of mindfulness on the theme of uh, Applied ethics in Bhutan, and uh, now they are, are offering the teaching in schools, uh, many schools in New Delhi, uh, helping uh, school teachers and also students. So usually on the fifth day, we say, "Dear friends." We are on the fifth day of the retreat, so please uh, do apply the teaching of deep listening and loving speech to restore communication with the person you have a difficulty with. And you have until midnight today to do that. If the other person is in the retreat, that is easy. Because the other person has been exposed to the teaching, the other person has also meditated on his own, her own suffering and the suffering of the other. So it's easier. But if uh, the other person is not in the retreat, you are allowed to use your portable telephone to do that. In a retreat in uh, Hong Kong, Also in Macau, it's very interesting, about 50% of those who come to the retreat are Christians. They were originally Buddhist, but they have embraced Christianity. But all of them have practiced very well. On the sixth day, uh, the people came to Thai after breakfast and reported that uh, the night before 
they have used the telephone in order to talk to their husband, to their wife, or their son, and they were able to reconcile with them. And the same thing happens always in our retreats in Europe and America. I still remember that retreat in Ornenburg, north of uh, Germany. In the morning of the sixth day, four gentlemen came to me and reported that the night before they had used uh, their telephone and practiced with their father. And four of them, all four of them, have been able to reconcile with their father. One of them said, Dear Thay, it's wonderful. In the beginning of the, the retreat, I could not believe that I can talk to my father like that. I was so angry at him. I didn't, I didn't want to look at him. And last night, I still had some doubt that I can do it, even if uh, if uh, Thay had told me that you have to do it before midnight. So I telephoned him, and when I hear his voice, suddenly I found myself capable of talking like that, with love and peace. Daddy, I know you have suffered so much in the last many years. I, did, I could not help you. I have reacted angrily and make you suffer more. Daddy, it's not my intention to make you, you suffer just because I was ignorant. I did not know that there's a lot of difficulty in suffering in you. Please forgive me. Please help me. And I found myself talking to him in that naturally and did not have to make any effort at all. And that is a non-Buddhist practitioner. A practitioner who, 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 who is not a Buddhist. I know there were more than four people in the retreat who had succeeded. But uh, that morning, only four German uh, gentlemen came to me and reported like that. So, reconciliation is possible. You can end the difficult... The, the, you can... You, you should not... We should not uh, allow that kind of difficult relationship to to go on, month after month, year after year. It is possible to stop. And the miracle, always miracles of transformation and healing and reconciliation always happen in our retreats. The practice of mindfulness so that uh, you can be strong enough to go back to yourself and listen to your own suffering. To look deeply into the nature of your suffering. That allow compassion to arise so that you can accept yourself. Have compassion with yourself. And then you have the chance to look at the other person. In a sitting position, you can look at him or her, even if uh, he is not there, she is not there, and see the suffering that that person has gone through so many years. And you see compassion arise in your heart. You know, that is good practice. And you are motivated by the desire to go back uh, to help him or her. It means there is a transformation happening in the retreat. 
and that gentleman told her, dear Thay, after the retreat, this retreat, the first thing I will do is to go and visit my father. Many children, young people, came to our retreats and get transformed. I remember that retreat in uh, Southern California. The young people who got transformed during the retreat, and they went home and they coincided with their father the mother. And, they, and then they invited the father to come to the next retreat. <coughs> there was a lady who lived in Washington, D.C. She was about to commit suicide because she was overwhelmed by despair. She is a Catholic. She did not see any hope. She has uh, had that idea of uh, killing herself for several times. She has a friend who is a Buddhist practitioner, a Vietnamese friend living in the area. And she used to tell her the suffering, her suffering. She had a very difficult relationship with her husband and also their three children. And her Buddhist friends uh, try to help. And that friend has uh, a tape, a cassette. With, the, a, uh, with a Dhamma talk of Thai about um, deep listening and loving speech. At that time there was no CD, so the Navata was recorded on cassette. And she tried, dear friend, listen to this cassette. And the lady refused. Well, she believed that she is a Catholic and she should not listen to this stuff, Buddhism and so on. It's not right to, uh, to, to learn about another religion. So, so she refused. And one night she was on the verge of, des- of despair and she wanted to kill herself. She telephoned her friend. And that lady, that uh, Buddhist uh, lady said, uh, it's okay to kill yourself, but first come and see me. I want to see you for the last time. And then, um, take a taxi. Because uh, her husband took the car and went somewhere. Take a taxi. So she wanted to go and uh, to say goodbye to her friend and another to uh, before going to kill herself. And uh, when she came, the Buddhist lady said, is that true that you, you consume the me to be your true friend, your only friend in the world? Yes? Yes, 
You are the only one to whom I can talk. You are a real friend. And the Buddhist lady said, um, "You tell, you told me that I am my friend, but the only thing I request you to do, you don't do. Now I want to to to, to renew my request. Before you go and kill yourself, listen to this cassette." And then the Catholic lady said, well, it's okay. Before dying, I should satisfy uh, uh, the wish of that. So she reluctantly accepted to listen. So our Buddhist friend <coughs> would draw so that uh, the Catholic uh, lady can be alone and listen to the, the talk with the... But she was absorbed in the Dhamma talk. And she got enlightened during the time to listen to the Dhamma talk. The Dhamma talk is about the practice of deep listening, compassionate listening, and loving speech. And after finish, having finished the cassette, she wanted to and practice right away. Uh, she's, uh, she has the uh, the element of hope in her eyes, and that is why her friend, when her friend came, she saw the transformation. Dear friend, I'm going home and put this into the practice. And her friend said, please, wait. In order to practice, you have to train yourself for a number of days, so that you make sure that your success will be success, uh, your, your practice will be successful. My teacher is coming to America and offer uh, retreats in the East Coast and West Coast. So just wait until he come to Washington DC and you and I will come and attend his uh, six day retreat. And after that, I think you'll be able to put into the practice what you have learned uh, tonight. And then she accepted as she went to the retreat. She waited and she went to the retreat. And she learned how to breathe, how to calm, her emotion, her feeling, to release tension in her body, how to recognize the beauty, the refreshing and healing elements around. She learned how to listen to her own suffering. And she found out that her suffering is not only created by the other person. She has herself created a lot of uh, wrong uh, perceptions anger and so on. And she saw that she is co-responsible for her, for her suffering. Before that, she thought that all her suffering has been created by her husband only. And she thought that her husband does not suffer. He just makes her suffer. But now the, the understanding is quite different. She was able to see the suffering in her husband. It's a quite an achievement. You see the suffering inside, but you can see the suffering in the other person. And you see your part of responsibility in making the suffering here and there. And it takes uh, three, four days in order to do so. So that night when she came back from the retreat, she was practicing slow, mindful walking and make sure that she is herself. She was herself. And she came and sit close to him, which is uh, something very new. Came and sit to him for a long time and then she began to talk, my husband. I know you have suffered so much. 
during the past many years. I could not help you. I have made the situation worse. It's not my intention to make you suffer. <coughs> Just because I did not understand, I did not see the suffering inside of you. It's not my intention to make you suffer. It's my ignorance. So please help me. Tell me of your suffering, your difficulties, your despair. Please help me. If you don't help, who will help me? She was able to talk like that. And her husband began to cry like a baby. Because there are so many years she had not talked to him with that kind of language. The beginning is very beautiful relationship. But because you don't know the practice, you have to transform love into something else. Hate, anger, despair. Now it's time to, to restore, to transform. And that night was a very uh, healing night for both of them. They reconcile. After the retreat in Washington, D.C., we also offer a day of mindfulness for a few thousand people. Both of them came with their children. And after the work invitation, we had a chance to meet them, the whole family. And she told us the whole story. Otherwise, I would not, we would not uh, uh, have uh, uh, known the story. He told us about that, that story. So um, it is possible to change the situation. We don't have to change the environment. We should not think that uh, divorce is the only separation. Divorce is the only alternative. No. Many people think that believe that divorce is the solution, but after the paper is signed, they continue to suffer. You cannot take him out of you, and. She cannot take you out of her. The suffering still continues. So reconciliation is the only way. And reconciliation is not something um, that requires a lot of efforts. You do not have to force yourself to reconcile. You are saved not by grace, by, but by understanding. In Buddhism, we speak of salvation in terms of understanding. Understanding is a kind of grace. Understanding, first of all, is to understand suffering, the first noble truth. And when suffering is understood, we suffer less. Compassion arise. And with that understanding and compassion, we can repair the damage we have uh, caused. We can restore communication. We can bring back reconciliation and happiness. And this is uh, possible with the practice. And if, uh, we, if, uh, if uh, we have friends who know the practice, that you will support us, like that lady in Washington, D.C. She is a Catholic. She has not studied a lot of Buddhism, but she was successful in her practice because she had a friend. And many of us who are Buddhists, but maybe we cannot do as well as, as that Catholic uh, lady because we, we, we have not received the right teaching and receive the right uh, 
purpose. Two more, two more sounds. Yeah.